They've been sitting on this project for about two years. They started to do a little bit of it themselves, waiting for us to get out and start. We do appreciate them taking the gumption to go ahead and get rolling, but we're gonna take over from here and really transform this space. There's no shovels going in the ground right now, as you can tell. This is the reason for that. We ran into a minor hiccup that's going to force us to modify our design. I don't know if you can see that really well, but we've got a four inch drain tile running into what appears to be a old clean out it's buried under about 18 inches of soil there and there we've got some water bubbling up and it smells like caca la vaca all right guys and girls out there so the surprises just keep on coming i i don't know what better way to tell you this but that's the surprise right there <laughs> What is up everybody? Ooh, it's bright. There we go, that's a little bit better. What is up gang, Chris, Team Aquascape. The boys and I have an incredible project today. We are in front of a beautiful home out here in the near west suburbs. We're gonna be creating about a 13 by 18 foot pond with a wetland filter and a negative edge flowing into it. We are working for a customer that has been a friend of ours for a few years now. She is a landscape designer and she has worked with us on and off for the last couple of years and she decided it's finally time for her and her three girls to start living the Aquascape life. Lifestyle. So the boys, where are they? They're back there. They just showed up to the job site. They're unloading the product. I'm gonna give you kind of a walkthrough of what's happening here. This is going to be our access. We've got about uh, 50, 75 yards. There's Matt, say hi Matt. Hey, Matt. Here's our access. Really, really cool landscape in through here. A lot of organic pathways. You can definitely tell Kelly, the customer, the homeowner, is a plant nerd because she's got all kinds of cool stuff in here. It's a relatively juvenile landscape. She's been in the house for only a handful of years and just started working on the backyard stuff for herself. So this is going to be a showcase garden for her to bring her customers to come and really enjoy. So this right here is going to be the canvas for the next couple days for us. You can tell that we are bringing that pond and really incorporating it into the existing landscape. She's got a beautiful blue stone patio over here. Really, really cool landscape. I love all like the little nuances, all the cool stuff she's got in here. She's got Japanese sedge and then creeping Jenny. I just love the mix of perennials and shrubs that she has in through here. Oak leaf hydrangeas. We've got some beech trees in here. Beautiful silver maple. Just really Really, really cool setting I love it and it almost has this farmette type look there's a chicken coop over there she's got her tool shed but then on the other side her neighbors have horses and there's pasture over there so just a very very cool setting kind of like that farm chic rustic chic look so let me run through the water feature portion of the design and of the project no waterfalls on this it's going to look like one big kind of reflecting pond we've got wetland filter located over on this side we've got about a third by 18 foot pond here. We are going to do a brick wall that's going to support this bluestone patio. To some viewers, this might not look finished to you, but this is actually the design, this kind of back and forth, back and forth, very contemporary design patio is actually the way it's intended to be. So this area right here, this piece, 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 blah, 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 is all going to come up and we are going to build a brick wall inside the liner, my finger, like like this to create this really cool fish feeding area for the girls. She's got three girls. They all look like they're in preschool, grade school, maybe one's in middle school, but this will be the area where they can sit on the edge of the patio, dip their feet in and hand feed the fish. The brick wall inside the liner will go straight down to that two foot depth. And then we'll start incorporating some of these big flat kind of destination boulders all the way around. Okay, so that's the pond. The pond will overflow. So there's no skimmer. The pond will overflow into a reservoir that'll sit in this area in through here. We may take a small bite out of this bluestone chip patio to sink our reservoir down. We'll just kind of have to wait and see. And you can see the blue lines over there. That's the back edge of our pond. We have a little bit of real estate to take our dirt out, but this is it. And excavation is almost complete, which is kind of funny. So it sounds like after talking to her that they've been sitting on this project for about two years. They started to do a little bit of it themselves, waiting for us to get out and start. We do appreciate them taking the gumption to go ahead and get rolling, but we're gonna take over from here and really transform this space. I'm excited about it. I hope you're as geeked as I am. Why not get going, huh? Okay, 
hey, there's no shovels going in the ground right now, as you can tell. This is the reason for that. We ran into a minor hiccup that's going to force us to modify our design. I don't know if you can see that really well, but we've got a four inch drain tile running into what appears to be a old clean out that's buried under about 18 inches of soil there. And there we've got some water bubbling up and it smells like caca lavaca. What this appears to be is a case of mismarked septic and utility system. Unfortunately, we are going to forego our negative edge reservoir down here and just put a simple skimmer on the pond. So the downfall to that is there isn't going to be a waterfall facing the fire pit over here, giving them a little extra interest. It's a major bell and whistle that we are having to forego on this pond. But on the positive note, we have identified what could be a potential issue for the homeowner um, that they may not not have ever even known about so it gives them the opportunity to get this figured out and rectified um, but it also is going to be a significant cost savings by foregoing the negative edge reservoir and just putting a simple skimmer on the pond that will essentially do the same thing the thing about the reservoir with the negative edge is it's basically a skimmer on steroids with much more aesthetic appeal because of the waterfall but we're going to work through this challenge we're going to backfill this hole put everything back the way we found it and we are going to modify the shape of the pond just a little bit but we're gonna go ahead and start digging the pond out once we get this thing back filled and everything is back to normal here let's keep going focus all right guys and girls out there so the surprises just keep on coming I, I don't know what better way to tell you this but that's the surprise right there <laughs> that was such a Woodstock laugh <laughs> good you gotta get the eyebrows in there too <laughs> we've had a few challenges not really ch yeah challenges but not so much setbacks but opportunities to alter the design based off of stuff that's happening on the job site you know what i feel i feel like every year we kind of tend to go to a style mm -hmm. and this year it's mixing that formal with informal you know we just finished up that job in downers and we had that great staircase that we didn't did we've been using a lot more unilock block inside the pond and that's what we're going to do here and i really love free form kind of organic edge all the way around the patio and so to carry that same feel right over the pond is going to be great here and then you know understanding her big intention for the negative edge over here was to be more of a play area for the kids we can effortlessly get rid of that and create bigger areas like you've designed up here with the box so we made the bog wetland filter considerably larger and making that really interactive drilling out a boulder putting that in there where the kids can come into it of course the kids are going to play in the pond maybe we do some interactive stuff over on the side over here give them a jet or something to play with what kid doesn't like holding a nice power head huh? <laughs> but we'll come up with something i think it's effortless for us to kind of think like children mm -hmm. and come up with something fun for them to play with so now on to digging get a bunch of dirt out of here you know we took all the dirt from the wetland filter kind of made yourself a nice little flat landing here so we were able to establish the elevation for the back side of the pond here so we're not having to worry about filling as we go so now it's just getting all of this dirt out of here right off site and then getting liner and fabric or fabric lining. I think, I think we're out of here tomorrow bang <laughs> Right, 
well progress update we have the wetland filter basically all the components are in we just need to get a snorkel extension and then we are going to start rocking this area in that's our two inch line that is feeding into the bottom of the centipede we have the start of our brick wall down in there so this is the kind of funky little fish feeding area that kind of goes in comes out goes back in that's where we're going to kind of stop today we have an enormous pile of rock over there but tomorrow will be a big day because all of the infrastructure is now done and we can start finishing this sucker up. Oh my, things are just crazy over here today. They got Udi in the background. A little cloud, like a little weather cloud that came in to visit them. <laughs> You've got Chris over here with Matt setting some rocks. Matt is getting some experience over there in the excavator, which is awesome. And then last minute decision, we're drilling out a boulder over here. So let me show you what's going on over here. So we're drilling out a boulder. We've got our big old hammer drill. Ryan's coming in here, just drilling that out. We always do a bigger one at the first, and then we come down with our one inch line. And the reason we do that is if I ran a one inch line just straight up, we'd get a geyser shooting up out of the rock. If I can do a two inch inset, even a three inch works better, but if I can do a two inch inset and then go down with my main line, the water swells up at the top rather than shooting up like a geyser. And then I get the water to shoot, kind of pour over evenly rather than a jet. And so it's really just personal preference. I like it pouring over evenly. And so I win. We'll get back at it. Got some custom stuff going on. Really seems like we're getting into this formal, informal look this year. Uh, it'll be interesting to see what we do next year. We're always changing. So we've got a majority of the rocks in the wetland filter, which is a great feeling because it's only about late morning, mid to late morning now. But I wanted to take a second and show you how we are going to bring these existing bluestone pieces back over the top of our brick wall that's inside the pond and what we're gonna do with the liner. So this liner, comes back side of the wall that's inside the pond. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna trim off any excess and we are going to roll that liner back this way so that the top of it and all the folds stay flush with the top of this brick. The reason I don't wanna bring it on top of the brick is because we are going to glue these bluestone pieces to the top of our wall here. If I were to have that EPDM liner and the fabric and that kind of stuff in between the two, it would start to raise up those bluestone pieces making this very unlevel and when you you start getting into some of these folds, you end up doubling the thickness of the liner, so on and so forth. So you'd have kind of this wavy look and it would be a pain in the butt to try and get these things nice and level. The trick to this is setting water level accordingly. So water level is going to be uh, four inches below the top of these bluestone pieces. These bluestone pieces are an inch and a half thick. So that puts the water level two and a half inches down from our top course of brick right here. As long as the liner stays above that two and a half inch mark below the top of this wall stone, we will be fine and we won't have to worry about any leaks in through here. Just to give you a little quick tip on that's how we're gonna do this edge. The scenery has definitely changed from the other day, but the good news is, is we muscled through the crappy weather today and we finished, 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 finished. You can see Matt is finishing up the dosing system over there. And then we've got the last bit of garbage being cleaned up. But I gotta tell you, this whole pond with lack of a waterfall is much, much cooler than even I was anticipating. I love the shape of the pond, the low profile of it. I really, really love this cutout in through here of the fish feeding area and that going straight down to the two foot depth it just turned out awesome love the way some of the rocks along the back edge look i love the use of the gravel not only on the right side over there but also over there and then again in a couple spots over and through here i love the bubbling rock that the three young girls in the family are going to just have a great time playing with 
You can see there's like a stepping stone going across. Very, very interactive. Water's a little murky just because of the heavy rains that we had this morning. But look how low profile that bubbling rock is. But it definitely makes a statement for being as small as it is without totally detracting your eye from the rest of the beauty of the water feature. It just turned out brilliant. Love it. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. It's a little bit different than, than what you're normally used to seeing um, with the lack of waterfalls here. But we knocked it out of the park. Hopefully you guys feel the same way. Leave us a note in the comments section below. If you haven't subscribed already, please do so and hit the little bell so you can stay up to date on all the Team Aquascape stuff every Tuesday, Thursday, and Sunday now at 9 a.m. Central Standard Time. So Chris from Team Aquascape and the rest of the guys, sign off.